to another episode of The Adeptus Ridiculous. My name is DK, and I feel like over the past five months, I think it's been five months, of doing The Adeptus Ridiculous podcast, I've learned a thing or two about a thing or two with Warhammer 40k from our resident expert, Bricky. But before today's podcast gets going, if you enjoy the podcast, head on over to patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous, where you can get a ton ton of extra benefits, access to our Discord, bloopers if there are any. Uh, if you join the $15 tier, you get access to all of our digital HD posters, so you can have your big boobed goth waifu, or you can have your big blue weeb waifu who wants to step on you for the greater good. Anyway, if you enjoy the podcast, patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous. Bricky, do you want to tell the people about the book club and the merch? That was the worst fucking intro I've ever heard. Whoa, what? I'd stop it with the goddamn blue waifu, dark Eldar waifu bullshit. I will I'm not, not. I'm not about this. Yes, you, you started this. Started what? You started this. What's this? You you told me shill the posters. Tell the people about the about the about the Eldar and the Tau. Sell the posters. He says to me, "There's the thing called subtlety." Do you Where'd it know go? Who you're, do you know who you're talking to? Subtlety. <sighs> oh my god. Comments. Tell him how subtle I am. No, don't you understand? In the Warhammer 40k universe, you need to be subtle. Oh! <laughs> what the hell okay. am I? Shill what the hell am I showing? Get merchandise. The, the merch and the che book. <laughs> check out check out merchandise at orchidade.com or check out in the description in the content creator section. It got cool stuff: shirts, hoodies, Doge Van Dyer stickers. Let's go! It's great. It is. And great. also, uh, people have been asking which. I said that we're doing Gaunt's Ghost for the book club. People have been asking which. Like Gaunt's Ghosts, or how many of them? Um, I hate you all. I mean, I'm not, we, I'm we not only gonna, have a month to do it. We're not gonna I'm do not gonna make you, books. I'm not gonna make you read 40 books, just the first one. <laughs> Gaunt's Ghosts first and only. Just the first one, goddammit. I don't know why I have to explain this. Yeah, well, but, I mean, we, we only have a month until the next book club. How are we gonna get 45 of them? Like, there's no time. Actually, you know what? I think we are grossly underestimating 40k players' free time. Oh, really? You think they could get 45 done in a month? It's not actually 45, but, like, oh. I, I was being hyperbolic. Oh, my bad. There's There are a lot, but no, not that many. And yes, I do think they could. Shit. Okay. Anyway, so, on, a, uh, on on that whole thing over, because we did the Infinite Divine, Gaunt's Ghost, first and only, first one is the only one we're covering. Uh, DK, you don't know what, you know, yeah. you know. You don't know what we're talking about. You never say, know I, what we're I, talking I, about. I have no idea what today's episode is about, and I kind of love it. Like, I've been trying to guess in my head. Like, a part of me was like, oh, I bet, like, we've been talking, like, the Emperor's Children have been coming up a lot. That'd be super cool to do. I could see that happening. I, I've been trying to roll around in my head what it's going to be. Well, I'm so excited to crush your dreams, because that's not what we're doing today. Nice. Instead, <laughs> uh, we're doing on a topic that I've actually wanted to cover for quite a bit. We're doing oh. the Scola Progenium. Oh, what the fuck is that? <laughs> That's the response <laughs> I was hoping for. This, I don't even know. Like, is is that a specific faction? Is that a device? Nope. Is that nope? What the fuck is that a person? Nope. What what the fuck is a Scola Progenium? Is it a it's projector? A, it's a school. Oh. Okay. Today, DK. Today, DK. You're getting your high school anime episode. If you if you wanted your high school anime, this is the one. We get slice of life Warhammer 40k today. We're getting a little slice of life Warhammer. If you if you want a little bit of about a people in a school, you know, being being taught things, you want a little bit little bit of uh, of gender rules and and a little bit of tension between men and women. You want a little bit of uh, like an evil drill instructor. We got it. This is oh. your anime episode, DK. You finally done it. You've corrupted us. It's oh, here. Nice. I've done it. You're the anime now. I. <laughs> <laughs> you're the anime now. Now you're the anime. <laughs> wow, Horace Looper Call. You finally defeated me. You truly are the anime now. It's my favorite line in the Horace Heresy. I'm so glad you brought that up. Favorite line. Mm. He <clears> didn't <throat> say that. 
Yeah, he did. It's, you, you. Give so, it. should I put it on the on the screen? The quote is this there. Don't worry. So, the Scola Progenium. This is gonna be a shorter episode, but it's a fun topic. Okay. So, this is a school. Le legitimately, I'm not, I'm not joking. This is a school. Okay. And the Scola Progenium is a division of the Adeptus Ministorum. Do you remember the Ministorum is? Um, refresh. the Ecclesi the ecclesiarchy, the oh, okay. gotcha. the church. There yeah, there's so many like uh, uh, Adeptus, Astarte names that like it it gets it all gets jumbled up. Like I get very confused over what like all of the names are. So thank you for the the, the refresher about it being like the ecclesiarchy, the church. Got it. Yeah, you know, you know the all of our good Doge Van Dyer times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the school of Progenium is a special school, and now normally in the Imperium you have things called the Scolas, and the Scolas are like eh, my kid. But the remember the librarian in Infinite and Divine? He was mm -hmm. like my kids going to the Scolas, a good Scola. It's like oh, he's kids going to college or going to a good school, you know. Oh, the school right, of right, right. Progenium is a fancy pantsy one. It is entirely responsible for the upbringing and education of orphans. Oh. So, predominantly those of nobles or officers in the Imperium that have died in service. Ah, okay. So, like, Imperial Navy or the Imperial Guard. Mm -hmm. So, let's say, let's say you're a kid and your dad and mom went to go fight in the Guard. And they both got devoured by a Tyranid. Now is, you're orphaned, and you go yeah. to the Scola Progenium. You're picked up, and you're sent. Oh, okay. Now, so normally, your parents did the noble sacrifice for the Imperium, and now the Imperium is going to take care of you by putting you in this super prestigious school and training you and turning you into another uh, peon for the Imperium. <laughs> take care of you, huh? Yeah, <laughs> air quotes, oh, they'll, take care. Oh, they'll, they'll take care of you, all right. <laughs> Don't you worry. They've got your back in oh. more ways than one. This is so, the Imperium, isn't it? That's it uh, is. Uh, um, so the children who come in there are known as the, the progena. You know, they're called the progena, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, the progeny. Now the, progeny, yeah. They, this generally goes like ages from uh, 4 to 10 to 12 is the general recruitment range. Um, now, here's a... Gotta have a quote. Gotta have a bricky quote. Starting gotta off, have right? It. Yep, yep. Um, death is not failure, for even death can bring glory. Fear is not failure, for fear can be conquered. The only known failure is to ignore orders, for even a slight hesitation in following them brings an ignoble end. The Liber Progenium, Volume 1. So... Yeah. That seems like an Imperium uh, guideline. Uh, it's fine if you die. It's fine if you're a little scared. But God damn it, you'll follow my orders. <laughs> That's ba basically whew. you follow my orders regardless. Yep. So the sons and daughters of like dead Imperial officers or like an administrator that was lost in the warp, never to come back. Then they were all taken, these orphans, and trained to become like the backbone of Imperial society and of Adept Adeptus Terra. Um, just Terra is just like, it's lots of stuff. It's like Ministorum people. It's mainly like just the way, uh, like, like scribes, maybe like lots of different kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, anyway, that whole thing, it's like, yeah, it's like the administratum is a good way to put it. Um, okay. the education they receive is like unparalleled compared to all other scholars in the Imperium. However, the cornerstone of this school is iron discipline. Oh, <laughs> this sounds bad. I don't, I don't like where this is going. <laughs> this, this is basically a labor camp combined oh. with religious school. Oh. Um, so when they first arrive, they get a, gr a gray thing, a garb, and are taught that the God Emperor has no use for lack of purpose or weakness. And pain is the illusion of an untrained mind. Your day-to-day -day involves correction, prayer, fasting, contemplation, and meditation. Those are the cornerstones of teaching. Oh. It's, it starts off with, like, basic literacy and theology of the Imperial Creed. Now, if you remember the Imperial Creed, um, that is the belief that the Emperor is a god. Right. Um, whereas the Imperial Truth is the one the Emperor did, where he's like, uh, mankind is destined to rule the stars. Yeah. Um, the creed is the one that the guardsmen and the sisters tend to follow. 
So yeah. after you learn about the Kree, you go through history and politics. Then you get taught leadership skills. And they're top of these guys known as drill abbots. Drill abbots are hardened military veterans that have spent half their life in military service and then are Oof. in after uh, after time are then ordained as priests. Um, wow. These are these are church based imperial drill sergeants. Yeah, and I, I would imagine these are hard motherfuckers. Like if they've spent half their life in the military and they are still kicking, uh, <laughs> I would imagine they are <laughs> they are not the most friendly people. I mean, imagine a drill sergeant like from the military in, in real life, but instead throw it with the fact that they probably were like a guardsman or something and they survived. And oh. also they have a religious underfounding, like underbelly. Oh man, that sounds so, like literally the worst. I don't, it's it's not good. I don't want to be not, friends with that guy. He's don't worry, he won't be your friend. <laughs> it's true. It's fucking true. <laughs> It's it's really it's really rough. Yeah. So during the eight now during the age of apostasy, remember those good times? Remember ah. our, our lad, our boy, <laughs> our our goodest of boys who peed on the couch and, and and by peeing on it was like, I'm so angry, I'm gonna commit exterminatus. Yep, uh our, our boy our, our our doge boy. Our good was, doge boy. Our good doge uh, boy. The Stickers. school of progenium during his reign was corrupted and rife with slavery. Oh. The orphans were often used as slave labor in factories and mines for the ecclesiarchy. And promising individuals, <laughs> promising ones, were sold as slaves and servants for commanders, with the most attractive ones becoming concubines for nobles. Oh. Oh, I hate all of it. Uh, mm -hmm. This is this is this is this is going horribly. Oh, jeez. I we um, have to remind ourselves that our do go you, you know the Mr. Van Dyer man was really bad person. Yeah, the 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 mascot may be a cute fluffy doge, but um what he is based on was not a good person at no. all. Uh I really now regret saying that the uh Scola Progenium would take care of these people. And now I'm just like, oh boy, uh, you might rather be an orphan on the streets just begging for scraps. Mm -hmm. Ooh, ooh, Shy has arrived with a Drill Abbott quote. Quote, no, 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 by the throne, boy, how many times? Depress the loading cache before moving the drum feed, not while removing the drum feed. You'll jam the weapon. Smack. Oh, oh. stop bawling, child. You're 10 years old. You should have <laughs> learned basic auto gun procedures by now. 50 press ups and 50 packs Imperiums, and certainly there will be no dinner. Oh, boy. What's wrong, DK? What? You don't know how to properly reload <laughs> a, a rifle in two seconds at 10 years old? What are you, a pussy? And Certainly, no, there no will dinner. be no dinner. Yeah, fifty presses. What, what's a Pax Imperium? Is that like a? Is that like a some kind of pull up or some kind of like a strenuous Fucking, drill or I something? I don't know. Maybe it's a burpee or something, uh, or, or maybe it's like a prayer. Maybe it's like a lashing. I don't. I honestly don't oh, know. Yeah, that would make sense. If it was like a prayer or like fifty lashings, like while reciting holy scriptures or some shit, or it's like self. Uh, uh, Self-flagellation self or whatever. Yeah, self-flagellation. That's the word I was looking for. But in my head, I was like, is that the right word? Or am I going to a different, darker place? Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> listen, listen, kid. You, listen, DK. You didn't fucking reload your last gun in time. Not in 10 seconds. Guess what? You lose all your sororitas feet for the rest of the night. All right? Oh, no. Just No more just sororitas feet. Just kill me. Just, no, too bad. <laughs> the emperor has more use for you. All Damn right. It. Now, now back into Conrad Kurz's screaming gallery. Oh, God. <laughs> we haven't told the people about the Screaming Gallery. Maybe one day we will, but oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's a... Oh, that's a... All right, anyway. <laughs> so, um, continuing... Continuing Doge Van Dyer... I'm just gonna fucking call him Doge Van Dyer for now. For I it. give up. Um, the physically strongest went to the Fraterist Templars, which was that, like, militia he used to run. Um, of lots of guys, which eventually was removed from the decree passive to make it only like cannot have men under arms, which is why you know Sororitas. Um, mm. or the other physically stronger ones went to the brides of the emperor, making you know Doge Van Dyer's rule really strong because of course he's picked the best people. Of course, um, 
Now, during the school, they are actually segregated. Uh, the men and the women do not actually mix. Uh, they're completely segregated between uh, the male dorms and the female dorms and all those areas, mm. except for very religious ceremonies, yeah. because they believe that they need to maintain purity. And yep. if you're a horny fucking kid, well, yeah, you know, I was going to say that makes sense for for something that has so many like religious undertones and everything. It makes sense that they would separate by gender. And it's like male dorm, female dorm, no mixing, you impure bastards. I So that that makes sense to me. Yeah. This, like I said, this can be this is your anime high school thing. You know, anime <laughs> protagonist just got finished getting whipped 50 times. He's a little bit oh. of a of a defensive character, walks past the door, looks at a slat of his dorm room, sees a sororitist trainee right there, heart <laughs> flutters. Then they, they have to sneak out together to see each other. It It's there. It's there. The main villain is the drill abbot, you know, <laughs> right there. He's like, I see you sneaking out, um, uh, uh, Imperium Kun. I'm gonna, I'm gonna whip you. <laughs> I, I don't, Imperium I don't, I, I don't know how the fuck is. What's the Imperium name? All their names are really weird shit. They're all, they're all like, what's, what's like a religious name, like, like Jacob or something. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't um, know. E Ezekiel Kun, Paul. get, get back in there. Ezekiel Kun. Oh no! Don't do the X. And Elizabeth Chun. No, no. <laughs> You brought this on yourself, man. She's not the virgin. She's the Virgin Mary. Her name is Mary. It has to be Mary. Ah, uh, fair. Mary works. Mary works. They 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 came from the same planet that was that was like butt fucked by demons, and they're both oh. they both like share bonding trauma because both their parents got murdered by like Slanesh. I mean, sure. I've I've seen more fucked up things in anime. Sure, that that work. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, as I continue talking about this place, the the this plot won't work, but. We'll oh, get no. there. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so, so there's a couple of things and areas that people normally go to in the uh, scholas. Now, a lot of them go to the administratum of Adeptus Terra, and those are the ones that are like, okay, you're gonna become a scribe, or like maybe like a missionary, or I don't know, something like that, where you'll probably go work on logistics and administration, and then you'll die, and no one will really, really remember you. You know, it's just like a classic, like, administrative duties, accounting, I don't fucking know. Yeah. Um, going there, though, those that are a lot more in their martial leanings, a lot more combat-oriented, because you do have a major amount of combat training, as well as knowledge. Like, you have your schools, but you were also drilled like a boot camp. Yeah. Now, some of them, mainly the males, are taken over to become Tempestus Scions. So if you remember the Ordo Tempestus, those are the fucking badass drop troopers that mm, the guard right. have with the the cool flaming red eyes. Oh right, right, right. I was gonna say Tempest Tempestus Scions sounds super duper familiar, and I can't remember what they are. But yeah, gotcha. The Scions are are grueling, are completely grueling in their training. Uh, they are they are pr trained to perfection. Um, they the death rate is like seventy percent. Ooh. On the for the actual like training in its own right for a Tempestus Scion, these guys are like unquestionably, they 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 even have like a stratagem in game where it's like unquestionable obedience. Where in like an aura around a main character, none of them can run away from morale because they're just that drilled. Um, the Tempestus Scions, they they're actually trained in a matter that is is pretty it's pretty damn intense, obviously. Yeah. Um, but they're tr like they have trials of compliance, is generally what they're known what they're known for. Oh, and this bad. involves <laughs> this involves live fire exercises in the hallucinarium. Oh which, no! Which the name is, speaks for itself. But go on. <laughs> it, it, it's an endless labyrinth where they are constantly exposed to strange visions and false suggestions. Yet they are expected to follow the order of their superiors without hesitation or question no matter how strange the orders might be and no matter how monstrous the shit they're fighting um oh. and then there are also timed physical tests like scaling a, an entire facility while chanting the skull of progenium's motto and oh. if they if they start to slip or they become out of sync 
with the uh, the tempo of the servo skull near them, the cadet while climbing will have to start dealing with live gunfire. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so they're like they're like climbing a fucking skyscraper, being like, "Jesus loves me, this I know, cause the <laughs> Bible told me so." And then if they start fucking up and they get tired, like people start shooting at them. <laughs> oh my god! So they, they don't they don't choose to do this. They're like picked to do this, right? Like, the, the the best of the best are picked for this. It's not like they fucking volunteer for this shit. Well, don't get me wrong. People who are brought an orphan to the Scola do not, are not happy about being in the Scola. Yeah. But, um, no, they're generally picked because they showed the greatest, like, physical right. aptitude. Oof. That makes it even worse because they don't even, they probably don't even want this shit. <laughs> yeah, well, to. well, so, okay. So, I, I should probably back this up a little bit, because this is a little bit important. Okay. Um, there's this thing that they have called, um, I think it's called the Cadet Forge. Well, that's, that's one of the things they have. Um, but there's a thing, when, when they're brought, right? They're brought in these giant, like, camps of people. Huge, like, because normally they have, like, they have thousands of new recruits every year. They, there's never a lack of orphans in the goddamn Imperium, right? Right. Um, the thing that goes, though, is that they arrive with all their ranges of, of ages, of course. And uh, eventually, it's kind, of a little, it's kind of a little bit weird. Often, like, a commissar, right, will be walking through a planet that just got fucked up. And they'll find, like, a, a son or a daughter that's, like, hiding in, in the corner, uh, strewn amongst bodies. And they'll take that kid and bring to the skull and like, oh, wow, this kid survived. That's really important. Sometimes even commissars might take a prospective recruit. Um, they'll go to like some backwater fucking back alley world. And they'll find kids. like they'll find a kid that's really like has like a really high aptitude in like the sciences or maybe just knowledge. And they'll just take the kid away. Jeez. And sometimes the parents are still there. And they might oh. they might not be okay with that, and the commissar might kill them in doing oh. so. Jeez. There's like your your kid is better served in the Imperium of Man here instead of on this this Detroit looking Cleveland ass planet. And he just takes the kids, murders the parents. This is yoink, then just takes the kid to the school of Progenium. Yep. And wow, that's fucked up. That's so fucked up. Yeah, I mean, hey man, the commas, they, they need the they need the imperial imperial military to be staffed. You know, you gotta have those people. Yeah, you gotta have those prospects. God mm -hmm. damn. Well, often they're they are inducted in these large groups following like a planetary disaster or something. Mm -hmm. um, though occasionally certain individuals are thrown into larger groups if it's more convenient. They undergo a series of mental and physical examinations. Uh, however, this is only in, for the facility. Because it makes it important that depending on how their planet got destroyed, you make sure you weed out the lesser minded. Oh, um, okay. So they might not, in a confined, isolated complex, go crazy and kill other people. Good call. That's a, that's a solid move on their part. Uh, okay. probably, probably a good idea. Like if they were uh, messed up by demons on their planet and they have signs of corruption, they'll, they'll quickly escort them away from the other kids and quickly escort them into a grave. I was going to say, if, if yeah. they think that they've been corrupted by chaos, chances are that person is not living for much longer. Uh, let the, alone being led into the school with the kids. Bring, bring with the kids, you know. He's got a little, little Jimmy over there has got a slight problem with his head. He's growing fangs, but you know. That's an anime uh, plot line, is if a corrupted uh, kid got into the school of Progenium, and he's like the villain, and you know, it's like, oh, he's infested by chaos, but he's got a good heart, and, oh. and then he becomes friends with the main character, and they're all best buds. That's, there's no way they wouldn't find him. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Oh, yeah, in, in actual 40, no way. Like, he gets found, and he gets executed, and he gets put in, like, a mass grave or something. It's, it would be awful. It would be it would, terrible. It would be very awful. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, one thing though that's interesting is that we're like Imperial Guard soldiers are tend to be made up of very different cultures. Like the Cadians and the Catachins and the Vostroyans, they're very different. The Progena do not get cultural variety. Um, oh. They come from different worlds, but they're quickly recast into the exact same mold. 
it's a homogenous group that obliterates whatever culture they came from. They are given the exact same black uniform, equipment, uh, training gear, and they're expected to... They, they abandon their birth names. They're forced to be given new names. Oh. Generally chosen among a list of heroes from the Imperium uh, to have them, like, aspire to become who their new identity is. With the exception of a couple, um, siblings tend to show a very heavy, like... Uh, a very heavy like brotherhood and and strong bond together right. so they'll often be like allow them to have their original names oh okay. because that's because gotcha. it's important for them often whatever strengthens like brotherhood like if they all came from one planet they'll still have their old minds obliterate their old uh culture obliterated but they might like stay together because the brotherhood between kids is is more important in terms yeah. of making them stronger makes strong um, link makes a strong soldier they also have things called mindscaping. Oh, um, God. Oh, no. This, does, this isn't <laughs> always a thing they do, but they'll often strap them into an iron chair and then insert needles into the back of their skull and flood their head with a neurochemical fluid that cleanses their synapses of old memories and oh, paves God. way for new information, allowing them to forget, to literally forget their old life. Oh, Jesus. During this this period of time, servo skulls will be spinning around them, screeching righteous speeches, war qu uh, cries, or quotes from ecclesiarchal texts. What? That's that's that sounds like some clockwork orange shit right there. It is exactly what it is. It is uh, full clockwork orange. <laughs> it's that's wild. Jesus. So I mean, uh, they if you were a commissar and you ganked a kid and murdered his parents right in front of him, that kid's probably not even gonna hold a grudge because he's gonna forget about it when you put in the forget me juice into the back of their skull. <laughs> the forget me juice, <laughs> juice that hurts your bones, mm, bone hurting juice. <laughs> I got my forget me juice. <laughs> Come here, right in the back of the skull. Oh. It's 4 p.m., honey. It's time for your forget-me juice. Yes, Drill oh. Abbott, by the Emperor's will. <laughs> it's, instead of the, instead of the, it's 4 p.m., time for your whatever, and then the sad guy is just like the Chad image, where it's like, yes, yes, Emperor. Uh, this place sounds awful. Like, God, it's... <laughs> new, new brain bleach. <laughs> Kills up to 90... There you go. <laughs> Kills up to 97.9% of disturbing mental images. That's fuck, uh, That's a great fucking photo, Shy. Because they, it's this next part was literally... Um, it doesn't always work. Dreams and visions from previous existences will sometimes haunt the recruits. Like oh, a no. scion <laughs> may never, like, fully rid himself of his nightmarish visions of his homeworld or the death of his parents. And so, oh, because of that, their forget me juice is <laughs> tends to be unquestioned. Great. Um, oh, oh, oh! You wanna you wanna hear some shit? Sure. I mean, we're already knee deep in it. Why not get it up to the waist, right? <laughs> so sometimes a cadet will show too strong an unwillingness to conform, and oh. often as a reward for their impotence. They are released into the training grounds to be hunted down by their former comrades. Oh! This serves both to bond the other comrades and punish individuality. Oh. So if a, sometimes if a cadet will publicly disobey orders, if a drill abbot says do this and they say no, often the drill abbot will take their hammer and immediately slam them directly into the student in front of everyone else. Oh. And and they will gr uh, shatter whatever remains of their spine and rip their oh. spine out and put it in a glass box Jesus. mounted on the dormitory to serve as a warning. Holy shit. Holy shit. That was little Jimmy. Little Jimmy didn't want to climb the 4,000 foot wall with two broken legs while I was shooting him. And look... Little Jimmy is is hanging on pretty well now, don't you think? Stapled <laughs> to my fucking mantle. <laughs> oh my god! I was oh jeez. Who would who would disobey in that situation though? Like you have got to know that if you're like no, I don't want to do it, regardless of like if your legs are broken, you're gonna get killed anyway. Like shh, what kind of? Oh, well, geez. normally it's because whatever their prior life was was so much better than the hell they're currently in. Or 
they have corruption or they're so oh. incredibly traumatized that they just they just they gotta rise. I mean, eventually, like people rise up all the time. These are these are kids. Sure. These are nine year olds. That's fair. And stuff. And honestly, and, and sometimes like they think I would rather die than live another day in this hellhole. Oh, um, so they'll do it on purpose because they're like, "Fuck this, I'm out." Like, just give me the sweet embrace of death. Pretty much sometimes. Gotcha. Uh, that was also not the most extreme punishment. One time. A, a group, a full year, a whole year rose up against the dictates of their masters because their mindscaping chemicals didn't work properly. Ugh. And the abbot prime, which is like the drill, main drill abbot, mm. ordered the officio perfectus, which is the commissars, to crush the rebellion. While the cadets were still alive, they were, they were covered and, and buried alive with cement mix and mortar. Oh my god. And they were and they were used to line the walls of the scola with their with their bones jutting out grasping for freedom. And they now line like the locker rooms with these like carbonated looking motherfuckers. Oh, oh my god. As a warning of to consequence for insubordination. This is the worst anime high school thing ever this is the worst this is this, terrible. this is this is this is anime high school if it was ran by guts oh it, it would be worse <laughs> if, if it was guts it'd be worse it'd probably be worse well no eh, maybe actually isn't know. guts okay isn't it the other guts is that... probably okay yeah okay it's the stuff he's fighting that are bad okay he has it's... to get as bad as them okay it's the horse then whatever that horse is yeah the, this one this school is just like yeah imagine it's berserk but you're casca uh, <laughs> ha, I, ha, I, ha, 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 ha. DK, I yeah. liked it. I liked it better when when this was. I liked it better when the kids were in the walls. <laughs> it's that's horrible though. <laughs> like that's and can you imagine going into your locker room and being like, "What's that on the wall?" It's like, "Oh, those are the people that tried to rise up." That's that's them. It's like, oh, okay. the night lords would really like this place. Oh yeah, they'd love it. They'd send their kids there for a summer retreat. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> a summer retreat, like, hey, we're going to summer camp, kids. It's like, oh man, where are we go? All the night lords, kids from Nostromo. Yeah. Like, what? Are, where are we going? We're going to the Scola. Whoa, let's go! I can't wait to see the bodies in the locker room, Dan. Let's go. I, I hope they've dimmed the lights since last time because it was oh. really bright. <laughs> it's true. They would want the lights dim, wouldn't they? <laughs> oh. Uh, now, so on on, the, on another continuation, um, <laughs> other things that happen in the Scola. Um, so uh, the Officio Perfectus is also the Commissaratorium. Uh, basically, Commissars are also created in the Scola Progenium. Okay. Um, now, you know what a Commissar is. It's like one of the most iconic characters in 40K. Yeah. They're, um, they're sort of like the leader. Well, I don't want to say leaders, but they're the ones that make sure that uh, everybody's moving forward. If anyone tries to retreat, the Commissar's like, no, you don't. And he sort of keeps them in line. Unless you're the, the Krieg, which the, the Commissar has to make sure they don't all rush off and die too quickly. It's always so funny to me. <laughs> um, but so the Commissars here are the are very specific people. The Only the really highly proficient members of the male group uh, well I, some females as well but uh very proficient and like unwavering discipline become commissars mm -hmm. often in the trials of compliance commissars will actually have a very interesting test and without knowing it's a test a cadet will be commanded to locate one of its closest colleagues one of its best friends get and they were given a bull pistol and told to shoot them in the head oh, of course now they are. This execution shows a double purpose. One, it shows that the commissar can follow orders and have no problem killing a stubborn officer in the heat of battle. Yeah. But more particularly, it recognizes, it shows the danger of a stubborn commissar. So, naturally, a commissar that refuses will eventually be chosen to be shot for another commissar. Oh, <laughs> of course. So often, Jeez. often like it's your best buddy that you've hung out with for like ten years in this school, and they give you a bow pistol and they say kill him, and the commissars that are like by the emperor's grace, bang, they're the ones like, good job, 
Good well job. done. Oh, you're so Excellent proud of you job, for murdering Sarden. your friend for ten years. Your best buddy. Well done. The emperor's proud. It's like. And, oh. and if they and if they don't do it, they give it to their best buddy, and they're like, "Kill your friend." <laughs> what if they both say no? Has that ever happened? Where like they were like, then, "Oh then yeah, another go kill your." <laughs> then another commissar does it. Oh, well, they're, they're, it might not be your best friend. Or they go in the walls. I don't know, man. Like, or something they go will happen. In the walls. <laughs> Throw them in the walls, these they, they disobedient don't, fuckers. <laughs> they don't want a waste of good talent, though. So they probably won't throw them in the walls immediately, but they'll find something yeah. for them. They'll find something um, horrific for them, sure. sure. Though, at the same time, like, the com the whole commissar thing, obviously, they're very, very iron wheeled people mm -hmm. with all of this stuff that they do. Um, though there's also a couple other things that you can become from the Skolas. Um, you can become an officer of the Imperial Navy. So often the officers and generals that fly starships, those are the guys okay. that come from there. They're pretty hardcore. Um, there's, like I mentioned, the Ministrata people as well. There's a couple ones that are very interesting, though. Um, women normally almost always go into the, either the uh, administration or the sororitas. Almost right. all Adeptus sororitas are from the Scola. Oh, um, okay. So almost every sororitas uh, uh, is originally orphaned. Um, which I think kind of, I think feeds into the whole nun thing a little bit more too. Definitely. Um, like Celestine was an orphan. She was eventually taken by the Scola. She was trained. She was brought to the Sororitas. Okay. Um, psychers are often either killed outright because they're too much of a problem or they're given into the black ships to be sacrificed to the emperor. Um, oh, right. Which he needs like a thousand psychers a day to survive, right? Yep. Uh, or sometimes they disappear. Uh, they are either oh. given to the Sisters of Silence, the blanks that the mm -hmm. custodians work with, or really pro. Oh, oh, sorry. So let me rephrase that. Um, psychers might be trained well as an acolyte for the Inquisition. Okay. Um, or sometimes really proficient people might be trained for the Inquisition and become inquisitors. The Skola oh. Progenium is where Inquisitors come from, and these are like cream of the crop. These are okay. creme de la creme. <laughs> these, these are like the people. The best. It is probably the highest honor is mm. to be inducted as an acolyte for an Inquisitor, and where you serve under an Inquisitor for some time, and then could possibly become one yourself. So uh, that's, that's a big deal. That's it's a huge, a huge deal. deal to become an inquisitor or potentially become one. That's a that's a lot of power. You are you have the most power in the entire Imperium, besides yeah. like the high lords themselves. Mm -hmm. um, also, you said the the these some of the psyker kids would get sent off to the Sisters of Silence. The blanks. that was that was a mistake. That that was me, okay. me saying that wrong. Okay, um, I, I, I was gonna say, wouldn't that be bad for the kid? Wouldn't the kid immediately just fucking lose his goddamn <laughs> mind? I was like, uh, that's such torture. <laughs> that's so evil. Like, why would you uh, often, do that? <laughs> often, the sisters of silence are the ones who man the black ships to take the kids to the emperor to die. Gotcha. That's what I meant. My bad. Gotcha. Okay, cool, cool. Now I'm, I'm like, man, that's, these blanks are assholes. They're like, oh, you can't find something to do with a psyker? will take them and it's like oh no no why <laughs> you're so evil <laughs> so okay often the the sorry sometimes blanks will arrive and those oh. blanks are then given to the sisters of silence okay gotcha 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 um sometimes particularly proficient people or kids might just stop showing up um, sometimes these kids will just be going to the lunchroom or whatever, and they'll just not come back anymore. Like, where'd Johnny go? And like, Johnny just go is gone. I don't know where he went. Huh. These, uh. these kids are taken to the Officio Assassinorum. Um, oh. Where they're trained to become assassins. Okay. Uh, now, that is hellish. They're generally taken oh. on a ship with a bunch of other candidates. And on the journey over there, they they tend to do all manner of horrible things to them. They'll increase the gravity of the room. Uh. They'll they'll not give them any food. They uh. they'll they, they they literally do a battle royale. Jeez. Like they're on the ship, they'll turn off life support sometimes. They'll lower the oxygen amount in the air. They'll increase gravity. They'll decrease gravity. They'll they'll send like other servitors to try to kill them they'll they'll be forced to kill their friends and oh. and like the ten, the 10 remaining 
most cunning people are the ones that will be inducted into training into the officio assassinorum. Um, God. I should I should make it very clear that the assassins are treated a lot better than the kids in the school because these are really high level people mm -hmm. and finding individuals of this power is rare and they're right. a little bit more careful with how quick they would they'll turn they'll throw them into the walls <laughs> well and like well, why not treat them well i mean they they were already on the battle royale ship and they've already killed and slaughtered and been tortured it's crazy this damn school <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, this kid is showing great uh, uh, aptitude for being an assassin. Let's just yoink him, throw him in a ship, let him kill each other. Just, everything is just like, yeah, this kid looks like it might be good at doing this. Yoink, throw him in the new torture. It's Jesus. <laughs> like I was like, initially, like just the base uh, school sounded bad, but God, it just gets so much worse. Everything is just, it just keeps getting worse. Yeah, yeah, even school is grimdark in the grimdark world. Yeah, the grimdark school is really grimdark. There's a couple other this situations. We'll definitely do an episode on the assassins in their own right one day. Mm -hmm. um, but after like a certain period of time going from each of the different sections of the, you know, the scholas, mm -hmm. eventually you, be, you do get selection day. And selection oh, day is boy. like where you get to choose where you're going. Or not choose, uh -huh. but where you get sent. And that's like a pretty big deal depending on like who goes with where. Um, you know, it's like you are entering the Ordo Tempestus. And you're like, woohoo, I get to be a stormtrooper. Yeah. Like, or, you know, or you disappear and, you know, they're gone. <laughs> you just disappear. Where'd Johnny go? I don't know. He's either dead or an assassin now. I don't fucking care. <laughs> 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 John, John, Johnny's gone. Who knows where Johnny went? Johnny, maybe, maybe he got, maybe he got whacked by a drill abbot. Who knows? Who knows? Whatever. I, I didn't see any new spines on the abbot's door, so I think I, I don't think it was that. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes they're actually given over to the Adeptus Arbitus as well, which is like the military police. Um, oh, okay. Uh, which is kind of neat. They're they're basically a bunch of they look like they look like goddamn uh, um, 1984 fucking. <laughs> like dudes with giant maces, like hello. <laughs> I think Alpha Busa made a video, or it's like attention citizen, you have been filling your your rat rations with stardust. This is illegal under <laughs> under uh, temple or <laughs> fucking temple guideline two three seven dash three. You have lost the right to your legs, and he like breaks their legs. Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, <Sounds> citizen. Like <laughs> <laughs> sounds about right for this school, though. That sounds about right. Yeah, I, you know, haha, -ha, funny meme, but it's like, yeah, that probably actually happened. I, mean, I, sh I should mention that the Adeptus Arbitus are literally Judge Dread. Ah, okay. They, they are literally, literally Judge Dread. <laughs> like, they are literally Judge Dread. Oh, oh, God. Yeah, they are literally Judge Dread, aren't they? Yes. The, that this, is the, no is... joke. That's one to one. <laughs> That's Judge Dread, basically. It is it is full on Judge Dread, even with the the visor and the and the angry yeah. face below. Yeah, that is. Yeah, yeah. They operate as as riot police. Yeah, RoboCop too. Yeah. Sure. You know, you know they they also have Cyber Mastiffs, which I think that new Necromunda hired gun game had. It's like a robotic Mastiff dog, and they use them to kill people. Yeah. Um, uh, luckily in 40k it actually works, unlike in the game. Ooh, sh 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 shade. Ooh. Haven't played it yet because I kept hearing everyone say it's like busted and broken and crashing all the time. So I'm giving it a few patches. Yeah, a few patches might be a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Cyber Mastiffs look cool though. They are very um, cool. Yep. But yeah, so that's that's kind of the the Scola Progenium. Um, I think there's actually like a lot of pretty good lore that could be like created of this mm -hmm. school and there's a lot of awesome ideas that i think you could really make an actual decent story about growing up in the scola say oh, yeah. say your your drill abbot is a little bit less awful um and, and you know you have you're all from the same planet you have that like brotherhood bond kind of oh, thing yeah. sure. uh you know if you if you really badly want to do do that stupid thing we're like oh the, I only get to see my my uh, my girlfriend from the planet oh, oh, on the religious ceremonies. I'm gonna sneak out with them. You really want to do that <laughs> bullshit? Go to town. I mean, I mean, shit. In my Night Lord's novels, the slaves are even having sex. So if oh. they can have sex, then by golly, 
By golly, they could do By it. By golly, they could do it. But you could easily make a, 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 a Scola book. Easily. Without question. It's got uh, a about, lot of untapped potential with what you could do with it. Sure, sure. Uh, I, hey, don't 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 we know? Uh, well, I don't know if we know him, but I, look, I follow Robert Rath on Twitter. He could he could easily write a great Scola book. Right? Come on, Ro- come on, Robert Rath. Come on, Rob. Turn, turn your turn your Mimi Necron book into into literal concentration camp fucking child labor goddamn school come on it, the go. tone is the exact same you should the have no issues same. no issues whatsoever shy wants to play devil's advocate for the scola though uh they don't do this horrible shit to these kids for the memes they need genitals of steel and all the survival and weapons training they can possibly get to survive and not go insane on the battlefields of 40k which is true it's oh, she's a, oh, she's it's a right. harsh world out there. Like you do need the most severe training possible if you are even going to remotely have a chance at surviving fighting shit like chaos. She <laughs> is completely correct. That being said, still kind of fucked. Yeah, I was gonna say even still pretty fucked up though. Still not still still a rough place. Even the schools in 40k want to kill you. Yep, they sure do. And then just, you know, throw your body on display as a warning because, hey, don't, don't fuck up. I'll yep. God kill you. Oh, you better, you sit down, you, you pray your prayers, you reload your last gun on time, you drink your, your, what, what'd you call it? R- forgetty juice? No, forget me juice. Yep. Your forget me juice. Drink your juice, you know, do, drink your juice, do your prayers, and don't get put into the wall. And, and, and hey, I mean, like, Scions are, are badass. I feel like this could very easily turn into a Hulk Hogan meme, where it's like, you know, his whole thing was, say your prayers, eat, eat your vitamins, and blah, 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 blah. It could very easily be turned into, like, a say your prayers, drink your forget-me juice, and for the Emperor. For the Emperor. Hey, brother. <laughs> Get get your get your forgive me juice. It's good. It gets big bones. Hell yeah, brother. Each each. Twenty two inch pythons, brother. Brother, I'm giving you three minutes freak show. Three <laughs> minutes of playtime, <laughs> brother. Bones <laughs> is ready. <laughs> That's the macho man. I'm giving you three minutes to do what I say, or you're going in the wall, brother. <laughs> brother. Brother. <laughs> Brother, I'm you're gonna going take away wall. your sororitas feet pics. <laughs> this Sunday at WrestleMania, you're going in the wall if you don't say your prayers, brother. <laughs> <laughs> brother, I'm giving you 10 seconds to drink your forget me juice, or I'm taking your spine, hanging it above my mantle. <laughs> <laughs> this has gone completely off the rails, you're right. <laughs> this has turned into a wrestling pro. <laughs> <laughs> The m- m- macho, <laughs> macho man, Commissar or Savage, <laughs> reported for duty. Ooh, the Emperor Ooh, wills it, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. I'm going to take your spine out of your neck, and I'm going to snap it like a Slim Jim. Ooh, Ooh yeah. little Jimmy, here's a bolt pistol. <laughs> Shoot your friend in the head. Ooh, yeah, you want to become a Commissar, <laughs> don't you? <ya? laughs> Oh yeah! You're not cutting this episode, Shad. No, this you is don't too cut good. That. You don't, we haven't done an outro yet. You can't cut this gold, brother. Gold. <laughs> gold. We don't need gold where we're going because we're going to the Scola. Your parents are dead, kid. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. DK. Oh wait, I, wait, oh wait, I need, I need to take us out, don't I? Yeah, you take us. Oh yeah, take us home, brother. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Thank you, brother, for watching this episode of Dexter's Ridiculous. My name is Bricky. You can find me at Bricky DK. Where can they find you? You find me at DK Diamantes everywhere, brother. Except Instagram, because Instagram jumps, brother. You can find quite shy, quite shallow. <laughs> Also, before we leave, we gotta shout out a couple patrons because they do really cool stuff. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Before I do my forget me juice, and I forget yeah. to do shy post the names. <laughs> Going to break your back, make you humble. Put you in the camel clutch. That's Iron Sheik. Iron Iron Sheik, baby. He's the best. I, I prefer Iron Zelda. 
Oh no! Wrestling anyway, heresy. How dare a- you? <laughs> anyway, we I had we wanted to shout out because we had that one like ridiculously high Patreon tier where you just have like fat amounts of disposable income. So we felt like we should shout shout them out because you know the, the oh, event, yeah. we should we should be a, a little bit nice to people who don't have good uh, financial sense. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, supporting Adept is Ridiculous is the best financial decision. Patreon.com slash Adept is Ridiculous, brother! Listening to Adept is Ridiculous isn't a good idea, brother. <laughs> uh, t- uh, Techno Outlaw, Ender Cobra, and Sweet! Sweet! Too sweet! Sweet! Thanks, guys, really much. We actually really appreciate it. You are fucking awesome. We couldn't do this without you. Goodbye, brother! Yeah! <laughs>